Well, the wind and the rain is battering off the windows here at Marfone Weather Headquarters this evening. Uh, it, take, it took a while to arrive, but we now have got the frontal system that is uh, now moving across the north of Scotland. This is the current radar chart indicating that the very heavy rainfall associated with the cold front now moving into this general region here. I'm located just to the north of Inverness. Uh, we do have some very strong winds indeed to speak about, especially over high elevations. We've got gusts in excess of 140 kilometres an hour over uh, Anak Moor, for example. Um, well, 176 actually, uh, Bulet Naba, 142, 176 at Anak Moor, which is 109 miles per hour. Uh, nearby uh, here, uh, 91 kilometers per hour at Tain, uh, 69 at uh, Inverness, Dalcross. And um, here at my house, uh, the wind speeds are generally in the 30 to 40 kilometers per hour range heavy rainfall in fact we've got rainfall rates in, in, in upwards of nearly 11 millimeters per hour at the moment so uh, accumulation of 2.59 millimeters um, and that will probably increase significantly over the next hour or so as the frontal system moves through um want to look at the two meter temperatures for this morning um and it was another very cold night across the south of england by the way um certainly if you lived in this general vicinity another very hard frost and um you know it's a very similar setup actually to what we've seen back in january after the initial shot of very cold conditions across the north of scotland heavy snowfall really piling up um once that um, once the southwesterly winds kicked in, we've seen temperatures shoot all the way to 16 degrees at Aberdeen at Dice Airport. Uh, the cold focused across the south of the UK, and we've got this um, upside down regime at the moment here. Temperatures did drop close to you know a, a degree and a half above the freezing mark in the north of Scotland, but those temperatures um, dropped off during the latter portion of last night. And then as the, the morning wore on with wind increasing and cloud cover increasing, we see the temperature upwards of 7, 8 Celsius at the same time that the temperature was reading nearly minus 8 again at Benson in Oxfordshire. So a very significant upside down regime at the moment. And it's all thanks to high pressure that is centred over the south of the UK. So these frost days are really starting to mount up actually and uh, here's a tweet an interesting tweet by our good friend shrine bruin based in um in in ireland here talking about how does this winter compare to others in terms of hard frost days for the purpose of this analysis i define a hard frost day with a central england daily minimum temperature equal or below minus two celsius and looked at the december january february specifically 2022 23 is the most uh, such days so i.e hard frost days since 2010 2011 so that kind of goes to show that this winter has been pretty decent in terms of cold especially across more southern areas even more so than than uh, across the north if i'm being honest here so like i said the temperatures did rise and at uh, 10 to 8 this morning it was sitting on 8 celsius in the north while we had minus 7 celsius in the south central portion of england so there's your big contrast of course in temperature this morning and that has been the theme actually for quite some time this was the sky by the way i took a photograph out the bedroom window it came off a night shift last night and uh, an incredible sky this morning i expected that frontal system by the way to arrive a bit earlier than it did it's only arriving now like i say this is another interesting tweet here by um by london and southeast weather here so the snow dreamer um produces some pretty good information and uh, pretty noteworthy tomorrow morning will be the 19th minimum of minus five celsius or lower at benson in oxfordshire so december january february it is the it it is without precedent this century and the number of frost days deep frosts 
has been exceptional. So this reinforces Shrine's tweet. You know, and look at this here. Um, 19 days of minus 5 or lower this winter. In comparison, 2009-10 had only 10 days. So that is pretty remarkable, actually. Is I don't know, is that is that including the month of February? So that's the entire December, January, February period. I think it is. That, that That's amazing, actually, when you think about that. So there you go. Very interesting stuff indeed. If folks do not think this has been a cool winter, for some parts of the UK it actually has been. Uh, latest in the stratospheric warming, still models, you know, 80% chance of seeing a sudden stratospheric warming with the mean zonal winds surrounding the polar vortex reverse. And we have got, like I say, an 80% chance. That is according to a video produced by the Met Office yesterday. Only 70% of major sudden stratospheric warmings, may I add, produce cold weather in the UK. So, listen, my good friend Mark Kinnish said yesterday, does that mean that we're not going to get a cold spell, um, you know, from this potential likely sudden stratospheric warming it hasn't happened yet so i have to use the word likely no i'm not saying that i'm i'm saying that there is still a chance that we don't get that cold spell based on the sudden stratospheric warming but there is a 70 percent chance so there's 30 percent of no cold after sudden stratospheric warming but there's still a 70 percent chance that we do and when you look at this so there's your sudden stratospheric warming. Takes place middle portion of next week. Wipes out the polar vortex more or less. Then we've got another wave of warming, if you notice here, by the time we reach the end of the month here. And the effects of this would be at the very end of February. And I think we've got a strong effect of that during the month of March. Now, this is the CFSV2 monthly forecast. Indicates a Greenland block negative underneath here. The notice the negative doesn't extend all the way into the United States proper. It also doesn't indicate it going into the British Isles proper and into Europe here. But we'll wait and see what happens here. This is the latest CFSV2 weeklies. And this is week one. So we've got the big strong ridge, of course, at the moment dominating the pattern, keeping things a lot drier than normal. But as we play through this step by step, notice here, even between 15th and 22nd of February, still have that negative to the north, big strong ridge of high pressure over Europe here. But it's once we go from February into the month of March, that's when things start to get interesting. First through 8th of March, Notice the blocking, notice the buildup of pressure to the north of the UK. And then as we go into the period 8th through 15th of March, we've got that Greenland block setting up, got the negative underneath it here. This, folks, would certainly indicate that we're going to a colder than normal March. But nothing in the world of weather, in the world of forecasting, in the world of computer models, Nothing is guaranteed, especially when you're looking so far in advance. So always have to throw a little caution to the wind when it comes to forecasting. But this is playing into the ideas that I've got that we will have interest in times to come. Delayed spring is something that I'm now starting to jump on with regards to March possibly even the month of April. So in comes that frontal system, colder in the backside, we're going to see the snow levels drop. We may get a wintry flavour even down the low levels. West to northwesterly wind, feeling chilly, but that area of high pressure remains dominant. Right the way through into the weekend, and we start to pull our air in more from Spain, even northwest Africa, around this area of high pressure. Notice the orientation of the centre starts to shift from the UK or from nearby into the south of Europe, pull our air in from the southwest, we're going to see temperatures rising to moderate levels. But the one main emphasis is dryness. 
persistent right the way through the majority of next week. And then as we push towards the latter half of next week and into the weekend, it looks as if that area of high pressure deflates enough that it allows the Atlantic to come back into play once again. And then we'll get a bit of a bombardment of the Atlantic, according to the latest run of the GFS, anyway. Any response with regards to the stratosphere comes at the very end of the month. I want to re-emphasize re that point. Also have to keep an eye on the Manjulian oscillation. It's going through warm phases at the moment, but the models are showing it going back, rotating back in through phase 8 in the 1. Does that coincide with stratospheric warming situation? I don't know. There's also other aspects that we need to consider as well. So lots of things going on. So I do encourage you, if you haven't already done so, hit that subscribe button. Stay tuned. I'm, of course, doing daily videos. So um, there is a lot of interesting things going on. And I will endeavour to keep you posted as best I can. Enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. See you again, hopefully, tomorrow with more.